Hey guys, Bada Bing here, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be putting together an M16A4 using the GHK Colt M4 version 2 gas blowback rifle as its base. Let's get started. I bought this kit originally for my Tokyo Maruri M4 MWS, and with all these parts combined it made for an awesome rifle, and a setup that is often overlooked these days. So when I got my new GHK M4, I wanted to see if I can make an M16 out of it, using the parts I already have. You only really need two items, an M5 RAS front set and A2 stock. Be sure to check the description for any links I may come across to help you construct the same build. This is a GMP M5 RAS front set for the Western Arms M4 gas blowback system. These things are becoming ever more difficult to source, I don't think GMP are actually producing these anymore. That may have something to do with the Western Arms M4 system fading out of existence. Lastly, you would need an M16A2 stock. This one is a Model Works Airsoft A2 stock, but designed specifically for the TM M4 MWS. Despite this fact, it still screws onto the GHK lower receiver perfectly, so it's safe to say they share the same thread. So, we've got these two pieces to complete our build. Time to take down the M4 as well as an allen key to remove the knight's rail screw and flathead screwdriver, you'd need an AR-15 delta ring slash barrel nut removal tool. Every gas blowback M4 owner must have one of these, they make the task a million times easier. This one is a Garda AR wrench and is a big heavy steel beast that I often use as a hammer. Another must have is a castle nut wrench, again this makes disassembling the buffer tube a breeze. This process is exactly the same as the real AR-15 takedown. First, remove the grub screw that locks the rail system into place. Next, pull back on the delta ring and lift off the top rail section, followed by the bottom rail section. Next, take a punch to the front iron sight pins. These could be knocked out either way and come out with little resistance. All that's left to do is unscrew the flash hider and slide off the front iron and rail cap. Okay, now to remove the barrel nut. It'll help to install an old AEG magazine and clamp the rifle down on a vise, but I'm doing it rough for the purpose of this guide. With the barrel nut removed, we can now slide off the outer barrel. This is where it's down to you if you want to change out your inner barrel to match the 20 inch M16. Personally, I'm leaving this as is. One, because I don't have an inner barrel that's long enough to be appropriate. Two, it'll increase my FPS fairly substantially. And three, in my experience, the inner barrel is concentric to the outer barrel and the BB won't strike the six inches of tunnel before it sees the light of day. It's time to install the new barrel set, but first, take note of the difference between the stock GHK outer barrel base and the GMP. The bottom lug on the GHK barrel extension is wider than the slot cut onto the GMP barrel, so the GHK barrel extension would require filing down in order for it to mate up perfectly with the GMP barrel. Or I guess you could open up the slot on the GMP barrel, but as the GHK barrel extension is made of a softer material, I'm just going to go ahead and modify that for a positive lockup. Once that's complete, you can now install your barrel and GMP barrel nut. Remember to align the lugs on the nut, the hole on the delta ring, the spring, the large C-clip, and of course, the hole on the upper receiver, so that the rifle length gas tube can slide through and into the upper. Once you have seated the front iron side and screwed in the small grub screw on the underside, you can now hook up your M5 RAS. Essentially it's the same process as the carbine length RAS. Sweet. That's the front set in place, now the stock. 
It's best to remove the buffer and spring before you conduct the swap over. Use your stock wrench to unscrew the castle nut, coax away the end plate and this will allow you to unscrew the buffer tube. The GHKM4 features a captive rear takedown pin spring, so it will not launch out of the lower receiver as soon as you take off the cap. Genius. The A2 stock features a short flat head screw that retains the long M16 buffer tube. Unscrew it and it'll reveal a long black shaft of the buffer tube. The following installation is a piece of cake. Screw on the new buffer tube to the lower receiver and then slide on the A2 stock, followed by tightening the flat head screw on the end. Easy. Before we call it a day, we need to back up the new buffer tube. This rubber piece came with the A2 stock and is included so you don't have to go out there and hunt for an M16 length buffer. This stops the bolt carrier from moving too far backward and causing damage, but this needed additional padding to replicate the same travel on the original GHK buffer tube. You can use coins to achieve this and here I use 4 10 pence coins to restore the correct length of bolt travel. That's it, the M16 build is complete, and man does this thing look good. The weight is more towards the front end, thanks to the long steel outer barrel, but it's still a sturdy platform and feels great. A proper rifle. Firing this M16 is awesome. You get more of a twang of the spring with every shot, which is cool, but that's all down to the length of the buffer tube. The increased weight of the rifle does soak up some of the recoil the GHK is known for. Hoorah. The rail is excellently constructed and has a tight fit, no flexing or wobbling. GMP have done a remarkable job on this. The A2 stock feels decent, no complaints here. It's just the right length and shouldering an M16 once again conjures up those old classic rifle vibes. Rifles like these are becoming obsolete. People don't want M16s anymore. I can see why, they are a little cumbersome indoors, and heavy. Those that choose setups like this probably only do so to relive the mid-2000s era Iraq war days, where shots of grunts atop buildings aiming through trigigons have burnt a lasting impression on our minds. The absolute latest pictures and videos you will see of the M16A4 with the M5 Ras and A2 stock in the wild will be among the last. The only recent ones you're likely to find are on videos such as this. Retrospectives of times gone by. Hoorah! Thanks for watching the video my friends, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, show me by hitting the like and, for those of you that are new to the channel, why not subscribe and keep up to date with my latest videos. As usual, any comments or questions, leave them down below. For frequent updates, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash pictures. I'm also on Instagram at Badabing Pictures, so you can follow me on there too. Until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in a bit.